Now, how many rating scales are there? At least three, as I mentioned before, the primary trait uh, scale, the holistic uh, scale, and the analytical scale. Let me just quickly present some examples to show how these would look like and what they mean. And this is from, uh, from Weigel's book again, which uh, has been taken fr from uh, Lloyd Jones, 1977. Uh, it might be a bit old, but I think it's uh, pretty uh, a very good example of uh, how the primary trait scoring guide looks like. You see, you have a direction, you have a background, you have final score guide, and, and so on and so forth. The difference, or let me just put it in this way, the, the distinctive feature of a primary trait scoring guide or scoring scale is that it's developed like these for one specific prompt in other words it will not be applicable to another prompt for which it has not been developed in in this way it's ex very exclusive to the prompt it has been developed for and you can imagine that it's probably it's very labor intensive and time consuming to develop a primary trait scoring guide uh, because you have to develop it once and that will be it it will not be applicable in the next exam where the prompt changes uh, to address this issue, uh, of course, you could use either a holistic score uh, scoring guide like this, which is actually based on uh, based on uh, I, this is from the TOEFL IBT Internet Based TOEFL Next Generation um, TOEFL. This is the independent writing rubric. It's holistic in the sense that you just provide one score and you do not break it down. Uh, and every score represents one level, level zero all the way up to level five, which makes six levels. For example, for level five, the essay at this level largely accomplishes all of the following, effectively addresses the topic and task and so on and so forth. Now, you might argue that, all right, what if uh, I, find, uh, I find an essay and we all, we most often find such essays that fulfill some of these assumptions but doesn't fulfill the rest of them what should i do well i think one one solution to that will be using a uh, an analytical scoring rubric which i will elaborate on but before moving on i just wanted to say that, that if you are teaching a language assessment course on writing or anything else this is some of the activities that i do in the class i ask students to map the rubrics that they find with or onto the theoretical frameworks that they know of. For example, the f previous three or four theoretical frameworks that we discussed. In this way, they can synthesize their knowledge and uh, they can find out whether the task description and the holistic or analytic scoring, scoring systems, which have been developed by different companies and organizations, have a solid uh, theoretical background or not. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Here is just the uh, a, uh, kind of representation of the holistic rating process, which starts from here. Uh, the content factors and language factors uh, and ends in the holistic score. So as you see, there are many things that affect the holistic score. But the question always remains as to which one of these components can contribute or does contribute to that holistic score the most. Is it, for example, the idea development or is it relevance or is it the style format or is it the language factors? Um, we don't know. This is, by the way, from uh, Sakya 2000, uh, 2000. We don't know because uh, the holistic scoring system doesn't have a solution for that. However, uh, the analytical rubric does have a solution because it breaks down the final performance into uh, multiple components, including content, organization, vocabulary, and this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, this is just one example of such format. As you see, the uh, the scoring scale ranges from uh, 7 all the way up to 30. Well, it, uh, this, this has been curtailed. I think at the bottom there is more. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to move to uh, 
I'm going to skip this because uh, um, you can compare whether they are reliable and um, um, they have construct validity, practicality. I have discussed, uh, th these are, by the way, components of test usefulness, and I've discussed these in a separate video, so I, I, I would like to invite you to watch that video if you're interested. Last but not least, I'd like to remind you that uh, the development of writing assessment is really quite time consuming. Well, most often what teachers do is uh, they ask students to write an essay and uh, they then develop a, a kind of assessment rubric from scratch. Um, or they just develop a rubric and then they ask students to write an essay on a, on a topic and then they use the rubrics they've developed or maybe they have adopted from somewhere or adapted and uh, they score. Well, I'm, I'm going to propose a better way here, which is uh, based on North, North and Schneider. They propose that you can develop a scale in five stages. I assume at least the first two stages are easy to do at schools, but uh, the from stage three to stage five, you would need some quantitative knowledge. And of course, it becomes a bit labor intensive and probably a bit time consuming. First of all, after the development of the prompt and getting students to write an essay uh, or a text, uh, the teacher is supposed to go through those essays and identify key features at different levels through rater discussion of performance uh, and rank them and rank uh, the essays based on those key features. So you might come up with a separate you know list of key features uh, which is different from the list that your colleague or your friend will would come up with. That's okay because you have to sit down and well uh, discuss with each other uh, to see in the at uh, the end of the day which uh, uh, which feature you would like to keep in that in the list. Then the identification of the discussion was writers, just as I think something that I just touched on. One way of doing this is through the yes, no binary algorithm, which has been discussed by Upshur and Turner, but this is not the only way you can just do it in a, in a really in an intuitive way. For example, you, you come up with grammar, vocabulary, um, cohesive devices, co the devices that create uh, cohesion and so on and so forth. And you feel that these can differentiate between three or four groups of texts. Then the rest of the story is quite quantitative and I would like to discuss them in a separate video because uh, it, this video was really developed for teachers. Uh, but let me tell you what happens at the end, I mean after this. Once you create the finalized list of components, for example, you've got four or five or ten components. If you've got many components, think about it. Can you, based on the, the, the theoretical frameworks that we have div, uh, discussed so far, can you uh, put some of these components together into one major category? For example, vocabulary and grammar into one category, and cohesive devices and task uh, the elements of task fulfillment in a separate category, and so on and so forth. If you can do that. Uh, then uh, let's say you come up with three or four categories then you should take a look at the papers again to see if it's possible for you uh, to differentiate between papers uh, based on those categories that you have come up with for example can you find some papers that are good in using language that's grammar and vocabulary and some papers that need improvement and so on and then based on that, you can actually figure out how many uh, levels of performance there are in your class. Is it four levels or five levels? Is it two levels? Is it just high performance and low performance? Or can you differentiate between three, three levels of performance? Based on that, I think you can just come up with a beautiful scale, which has got uh, those key features and also a scoring category. Uh, but there is a danger in uh, adopting um, rubrics that have been not that have not been developed for your classroom because they assume a different population 
and as a result the uh, writing quality and the features of writing of that population might be quite different from the population uh, in which your uh, class of students uh, is situated. Uh, therefore, my suggestion to uh, teachers is that you should really <coughs> decide to, sorry, <coughs> you, you should really decide to think about uh, developing your own assessment rubrics. That, I think, brings me to the end of this presentation. I had promised to, t uh, to talk about other models. I just, you know, one of them is a revision model, the text construction model, revision model, which has uh, quite a few stages. Um, in, in a separate video, I might talk about these models because uh, uh, the series of videos that I have developed, uh, made so far have been really long, and I think uh, this has probably made you very tired. If you have been following me, you're really a trooper. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention, and uh, I look forward to making another video to discuss other topics. Thank you very much and have a very good day.